Hey, I'm Alex Neat, and I want to show you my process for coming up with a musical idea from a blank page. Today I wrote with Metropolis Arc 4, which influences me to write in a way that I normally wouldn't, and I really like that in a sample library, so here's what I came up with. Alright, and now we can take a look at starting this piece from scratch. Okay, so we're just going to start out with a blank template with all of the ARC 4 instruments loaded in, plus I have all the trill orchestrators separated out with the TOs here, and then three different marimba xylophone piano combos because it's one of my absolute favorite things in this library, plus the trumpet ricochets also separate to remind myself to use them because I really like those a lot. That's beautiful. <laughs> All right, so starting out, let's just go for some low strings and build ourselves a foundation. I love the overpressures, those are cool. I think we'll stick with the staccatissimos, they're super crisp and clean. So we'll just record something, um, we'll make it really simple, so it can stay open and we can build a lot on it, cleanly. I think that's good. Very simple throughout. Add a little twist at the end. And now let's check to make sure these are on the grid. It looks like they are. All right, I think that quantized well. You never know. <laughs> All right, so what do I hear over this initially? Maybe some choir. Let's just open up the women here and... Very pretty. I think that's perfect. Keep everything crisp and short and Sprightly. <laughs> okay, so again, we'll just record something. I like that. That's cool. Get the little kind of triplets at the end. Get some rhythmic interest. We'll play off that. I really like that kind of thing uh, with this library. I feel like I feel like this library is great for for building some interesting kind of dynamic layers and and uh, rhythms, just because of how textural it is. You get all these kind of short articulations, they're very textural, and it's nice to layer them on top of one another and have a lot of interplay between them. So let's just copy and paste this to the men. Not there, though. <laughs> right there. Open that up. Take it down an octave, obviously. 
open this up and put these on something short as well. Perfect. I like that a lot. So, let me just keep going downward here. I like that range a lot. That gets really bright and uh, and playful. Love the ricochets. Open up the interface here. You know, pressing the octave uh, key here, I feel like maybe it would be cool to jump around between octaves and really make this kind of a jumpy piece. So I'm going to stick with this articulation and let's record something in here. Maybe not start with it though. Nice. I like that. Now I did make a decision as I was playing that I need to go back and place elsewhere. So I played that really straight the first time, but let's do this. That's great. I think that would be a great place maybe to bring in this trumpet ricochet. When I think about it. Yeah, okay. This will be, you know, it's kind of like a call and response sort of thing, somewhat, I suppose. Beautiful. <laughs> Love that. And before I forget, one thing I really love with these is these metals. This kind of jangly fun thing it just kind of rattles around with the ricochet of the trumpet. I think it sounds cool together. Nice, yeah, that's very playful and fun. All right, so we'll go with that. I won't quantize that because I played a little bit ahead of it to really get that to lock in a bit more. While we're up here at the percussion, let's put an accent at the end of this. That was nice and loud and clangy. <laughs> I think that's good. I think that's cool. We'll, of course, emphasize that stuff more. Now, what next? Where to? The possibilities are endless. Let's, uh, you know, I have like some triplets and stuff in there. Let's interlock some triplets throughout. I don't know if that's how we describe this, but.
One thing I like to do with simple things like this is check the difference between the tone of the mid and high strings. I really love the tone of that in the high strings. It's nice in the mids too, but it's different, it's a little scratchy. That has a really kind of singing sound to it. So we'll go with that. I think we have something there. Now I did this here. I think I would like to go up again. I just kind of forgot. <laughs> I also did something different here that I am going to copy here. Alright. I like that. Just gives it some rhythmic interest. I went up to octaves here just because I figure halfway through we uh, just kind of build a little bit at that point which makes me kind of want to try some flutes here now to add some texture to that. And we'll, we'll keep with these staccatissimos for this part. Okay. These I just want to even out. And played a wrong note here. All right. That should do it for that. Let's go down to some low winds. What do we have down here? a nice tone. <laughs> I like that. It's just kind of a nice growl. So yeah, maybe here still we uh, just add this for some emphasis. Not there. There we are. Now let's grab these and even them out as well. That gives a nice texture to that low end, I feel like. On the same token, what about, uh, what about timpani? How would that sound in here? The answer is it sounds wonderful. <laughs> so maybe we do the same thing basically that the low strings are doing, but simplify it so it doesn't take over the low end. So if we just played straight timpanis all over the place, then I feel like they're going to take over everything. That ended up really cool, actually. I really like 
what happens with these these accents down here that I just kind of slammed. <laughs> Yeah, it's great because everything's just kind of open and then you get those accents and it's just kind of a fun little musical thing. I like that. Um, okay, so maybe now we let's play with some trill orchestrators. Okay, I think I think we'll just kind of bounce around and do something playful and lively here. So not that hard to make these sound good and <laughs> like they work. So, let's record. That worked out great. I I want to make sure everything's in time because I hesitated on a couple of those because I wasn't sure what I was playing. <laughs> but it looks like everything worked out. I think it did. I don't think there are any obviously wrong notes. <laughs> so maybe we'll just go with that. And we still have some mid strings to play with. Uh, let's go back here again and maybe let's grab the ricochets with these. What do we have? That's a really cool sound. It's really, it's kind of feathery. I feel like it's just this kind of feathery thing bouncing around. I like that. It's a nice, nice texture. So we'll just do something simple with that to add texture. I just hear a nice little texture on the right side of the stereo spectrum a bit that I feel adds a nice liveliness to it. It's subtle, but subtle is good. Not everything needs to be right in your face. So maybe now we go to some more of this. Let's do some chords. Maybe around here. I like the color that that adds, it's nice. Augmented chord there. I don't know my chords very well, but I know that's an augmented. <laughs> bum bum. La da da.
think that works. <laughs> we'll see. Okay. Let's record all of this. Nice. Let's even these out. Probably not the hardest velocity though. That I'm not a fan of. Let's make the uh, triplet sort of rhythm again. Great, I think that works. And now, let's get some power into this. Some horns. That's pretty powerful. Staccato martelet. Let's do it. Awesome. Okay, I think uh, let's just play with some more of the trill orchestrators. See what those do for us. Let's go to this one here, wide open. When we start low and go high, I like both of those registers. They sound great. <laughs> Perfect. And, you know, since these are winds, they're a little, a little soft within everything. Let's layer them with the first horn-related patch we see here. There are flutes here also, but uh, brass-related, I meant, rather, but there are horns, so. See how these are layered. Actually, I don't want those to stick out, so I'll keep those down there. But I like that it kind of supports a bit and gets us, uh, you know, again, this is a subtle kind of support, and I, I like that. I don't want these to be the, the most evident thing in the mix. Okay, we'll just go upward here, come over here. that it's kind of a nice harmony with the other uh, trills we'll stop that there because I'm actually going to keep moving upward and we'll go to these flutes here and those will take over the trills now <laughs> Everybody gets a turn. Great. I'm going to 
going to chop this in half and we'll just use these for the for kind of a, a pickup, I suppose, into this section. So we get a nice build into that. Um, and we still have some open trill orchestrators up here. What shall we do with these? Horns. <laughs> That's such a nice sound. That sounds amazing actually. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna go with that. So we got like some some nice trill harmonies and I feel like everything's coming together. Beautiful. I think now let's listen to this back and see how it sounds. Without the metronome, preferably. I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Blank Page. Please subscribe to stay informed about further episodes, and I will see you next time.